Ah, uh, everyone else is doing it. Let's talk about AMD and Ryzen. Alright guys, let's dive right into what we know as a whole about Ryzen and we can sort of speculate on how fast Ryzen is going to be compared to other processors, specifically on the Intel side. Now I sort of have my cheat sheet with me, so if I, it looks like I'm looking down, um, it's because I'm looking at my cheat sheet. So off the top, AMD has demoed multiple times now an 8 core Ryzen with 16 threads and they put it up against an interesting opponent in the Intel i7-6900K. Now that's interesting because that's a Broadwell E chip that comes in at $1100. That's really high end and a lot of people going into the Zen hype towards the end of last year didn't really think that AMD would target that high end um, of performance. A lot, I feel like a lot of people were looking at AMD probably going more after the uh, consumer class chips of the current generation of the 7700K or the 6700K. And I think it surprised a lot of people that they were demoing the 8 core 16 thread chip up against Intel's $1,100 chip, and they were showing Ryzen actually beating it in many cases. Those benchmarks that they ran were Blender, ZBrush Core, and Handbrake so far to date, and AMD insists that they have not altered those programs in any way until there's independent testing and until those chips are actually in the hands of independent reviewers. There's no 100% way to verify that, but it looks like a safe bet, or at least a fairly safe bet. There's probably not a whole lot of um, sort of shady activity on AMD's part there. Um, in addition, the Ryzen CPU uh, topped the Intel solution in a Battlefield 1 test. They put the two processors both running NVIDIA GTX uh, uh, Titan X's, and in this case, again, the Ryzen CPU beat the 6900K in a gaming style test. Although I would argue strongly that an 8 core 16 threaded processor isn't really geared towards gamers per se, streamers yes, but not really somebody that is just looking for a gaming processor. They'll have, I'm sure they'll have other Ryzen variants that have less cores and less threads, probably like a 4 core 8 thread part would be a far more appropriate uh, part if you are strictly a gamer. Ryzen has yet to be demoed with the AMD Turbo Boost enabled, which again may be sort of the ace in the hole for AMD as far as it going up against the 6900K. So far we've seen um, that processor running at 3.4 gigahertz, but we haven't seen it with Turbo Boost, so it's impossible for us to really even speculate very accurately how high that clock could go under turbo boost conditions. Also, we don't know what kind of overclocker um, the Ryzen architecture is gonna be, whether it'll be a great arc overclocker or whether it's gonna be a chump. However, more on that in just a minute. AMD has noted that the Ryzen processor, they demoed it at 3.4 gigahertz and they've noted that the, the products when they hit markets at least the 8 core 16 thread product will be at least 3.4 gigahertz. Now keep in mind that they could still up that core clock um, out of the box when it gets to market, but so far we've seen the 3.4 gigahertz. Uh, that number may go up, however AMD seems to indicate that it won't definitely go down. The announced TDP, and this is where I was sort of going with the overclocking bit earlier. The TDP announced for the 8 core 16 thread part is 95 watts. That is a full 45 watts lower than the 6900K. Now from an overclocking standpoint, aside from how the Ryzen architecture acts, heat is always the enemy in overclocking and the fact that you're gonna eliminate a lot of heat using Ryzen seems to be encouraging for somebody that's hoping to get a good overclock on Ryzen because you'll need a less beefy cooling solution to get solid overclocks with it. Although again, more to be seen when independent testers come along for Ryzen. AMD has also noted that the AM4 socket, and this is a big deal too, the AM4 socket will be supported and used through 2020. And the reason that the AM4 socket will go by the wayside eventually is new RAM standards in the form of DDR5 and also the next generation of PCIe. Um, all Ryzen chips are going to be unlocked for overclocking, so their multipliers will be unlocked and you will be able to overclock them out of the box. You won't have to worry about doing things with the B clocks like some of the Intel processors in the past have to get an overclock on them. 
All Ryzen chips will be unlocked and ready to overclock, and that's a definite pro-consumer move as far as I'm concerned. Now, the biggest unknown so far is gonna be the make or break moment for AMD, and that is what price AMD sets their top tier and subsequently their lower tiered processors at. If AMD is wanting to compete with the 6900K, it's hard to tell whether they're gonna go after a slightly lower uh, price point and hope that people are just thinking x99 or AMD's side and that new adopters will go AMD and if it's a comparable price then it, with maybe a hundred dollar savings sure people might go the AMD route but if they're looking to turn people from the x99 chipset over to Ryzen I would argue and I think a lot of people are hoping for this that AMD undercuts Intel by a lot some people have said probably wishfully that the part will come out of five hundred dollars I'm thinking, and this is purely speculation, but I would not be surprised to see something more along the $700, $750 price point for the 8-core 16-thread part because that's a big undercut of Intel, but not so much that we're all going to be having wet dreams about it. Now, here's a few takeaways that we need to look at while considering Ryzen. First off, AMD isn't shying away like they have in the past from single-threaded performance comparisons to Intel. Um, while KB Lake and Skylake processors, especially with higher clock speeds, will fare better in single threaded performance tests compared to the Ryzen 8 core 16 threaded part, it's worth noting that Skylake and KB Lake parts currently, there are no 8 core 16 thread processors from those two generations. Right now, Broadwell E is what we're looking at with those higher core counts from Intel, and that's what AMD is comparing us or comparing this to. Lastly, it's worth noting that the demoed unit so far from AMD, again, that A-Core 16 threaded part, it's going to be targeted more at content creators. It, it has been marketed so far, especially with the recent demo of the live streaming Twitch while also playing games. That, that sort of seems like it's marketing towards the serious Twitch streamers that, that are willing to invest in higher end systems, but it's also marketed at content creators, YouTubers, those other types of content creators that can take advantage of lots of cores and lots of threads in their professional editing software versus just somebody that likes to game on their PC. Those Ryzen processors will be, like I mentioned earlier, the four core, eight threaded processors, or even down to the two core, four threads, possibly if, if one of those comes out. Those would be the processors that would be targeted more towards the average gamer. The part that's been demoed so far is definitely the high end, and I think it, it's indicative of the direction AMD wants to go. They want to compete for those high margin, high end processors that Intel has dominated for so long in that market space. So, as far as speed speculations, I think it's pretty obvious at this point, at least if AMD is being honest and straightforward with us, that the top-end Ryzen processors are going to fare very well against the 6900K. Now, as I mentioned earlier, price is going to be the biggest point in all of this. Will you be able to build out a comparable AMD system that will compete with a 6900K for it will need to be several hundreds of dollars cheaper to really sway Intel um, loyalists to make that switch over to AMD. Because if it's a brand new adopter, sure, you'll look at that lower price tag and see equal performance and jump AMD probably. But if it's somebody that's coming from the Intel side already, knowing what they can expect from Intel and knowing that Intel always or at least has in the past delivered on a solid upgrade cycle where you don't have to go half a decade before a new architecture is released, then those people are going to need a bigger incentive to jump ship. And that's the direction I really hope and I think everybody really hopes AMD goes with Ryzen and its price point. If you like this video and you like hearing me talk about what's coming down the pipe as far as technology goes, go ahead and give me a like down below. Also a subscribe, a share, those things are all great. If you have comments, leave them down below as well because I do get to those pretty often and I like to have those conversations in the comments section to really engage my audience as best as possible. The other great way to get a hold of me is on Twitter. I am at Hoosier Hardware. I'm Shane. I'll see you in the next video.